Join Dan Rather for complete coverage of Inauguration Day 2005 tomorrow. Experience CBS News. There needs to be a policy in place that the city of Lubbock enforces to protect the citizens from police officers turning the microphones off. That's a Lubbock attorney speaking out against the city police department, and it all stems from a routine traffic stop that shocked the community. Does it have a direct effect because of that? Don't know. Construction around the United Spirit Arena continues, so has it affected basketball attendance? We'll have the story coming up. It is something that is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing. And this four-girl scout troop from Hub City will be a part of that once-in-a-lifetime experience tomorrow. We'll tell you how they got to Washington. On your side, this is KLBK 13 News. And we thank you for choosing KLBK 13 News at 6. I'm Brian Mudd. And I'm Mandy Lawrence. Well, up front tonight, construction woes continue to detour drivers around Texas Tech. But does the lack of direction on Indiana mean lack of fans at sporting events? KLBK's Ellen McNamara joins us live in the newsroom with the story. And Ellen, I understand Coach Bob Knight says yes to that question. That's right, Mandy. Knight told KLBK after the home opener against Oklahoma State that parking horror stories have continued to have an effect on attendance. So I pulled those men's basketball numbers from this season and last. And those numbers include both non-conference and conference games. Last season, when the men played Minnesota, attendance was more than 10,000. Then in a conference game against Oklahoma State, attendance was more than 13,000. This season, in a non-conference game against SMU, attendance was more than 7,000. In another non-conference game against Northern Colorado, about 5,000 fans showed up. Finally, in this year's game against Oklahoma State, attendance was about 11,000. That's about 2,000 down from last year. But media relations with the athletic department says they don't know whether the construction and lack of attendance correlation exists. Coach Bob Knight says it does. Before students started in the fall, the university said a thousand commuter spots would be lost west of the arena. Today, instead of cars, tractors continue to occupy those spaces. To combat the problem, both Knight and women's coach Marcia, Sh Marcia Sharp suggested a free shuttle to alleviate the problem. Well, I would hope so. I would hope that uh, we've been able to overcome, uh, I think, the lack of direction and the lack of pre-planning in terms of all the problems we've had with parking. It's hard to gauge whether or not parking had anything to do with the attendance. And attendance was down a little bit. But one thing that we felt or that the basketball programs felt that they could do is take care of the charge for the shuttles. Now that shuttle is available to catch at the Texas Tech Health Sciences. It used to cost $3 per person and now it's free. Mandy. Ellen, are there any other lots available? There are some lots very close to the arena. However, they do cost money. Now those permits are available to purchase with the Red Raider Club. Mandy. Okay, thanks Ellen for that report. The next home men's basketball game is on January 29th against Nebraska. So parking problems and driving problems as well. We want to make sure you remember there are detours up again around the Marsha Sharp Freeway project. The exit on 327 from the West Loop will be closed again tomorrow from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. It will be shut down again Monday and Wednesday of next week. The good news is that this phase of the project should be finished by this fall. We've got to get a crane in there. We've got, uh, we don't want to be hanging or swinging beams over traffic, so that, that's why we got to close it for safe, safety issues. And I think if everybody just realizes that it is eventually going to end, <laughs> that they'll be a little more patient. Yeah, westbound drivers who need to get to Spur 327 can use a temporary turnaround on the frontage road between 53rd and 54th Streets. New developments continue to unfold in the case regarding a sex scandal and a former Lubbock police officer. Seven months ago, Blake Littlejohn was accused of letting a young woman out of several traffic warrants in exchange for performing a sexual act. KLBK Stacia Wilson joins us now from our newsroom. Stacia, I understand a civil suit has now been filed against Littlejohn and the city police department. That's right, Mandy. The victim's lawyer is claiming negligence against the accused parties. Attorney Charles Dunn says improper supervision by the Lubbock Police Department and failure to maintain policy are the two main focal points behind this suit. Now, the whole thing stems from a routine traffic stop made by Little John back in June. The driver claims she got out of several pending traffic violations in return for performing a sexual act 
for the former officer. Shortly after the incident occurred, KLBK broke the story and Little John immediately resigned from the Lubbock Police Force. The former officer admits to the act but says it was consensual. He also admitted to turning off his radio and video recorder during the incident. In July, Little John was indicted on criminal charges and is currently awaiting trial. Now, months later, the victim's attorney claims there's more than one reason for taking this case to civil court. There are two reasons. The first reason is the district attorney's office has failed to indict this police officer for sexual assault. If he's convicted of what they've indicted him for, which is basically civil rights violations, he will never have to register as a sex offender, he won't have to have any counseling, and there's a very good possibility that he will reoffend. Now, Dunn also says a change in procedure regarding patrol car cameras may prevent this type of case from happening again in the future. Mandy? Stacia, I understand the victim's attorney tried to settle with the city outside of court before filing this suit, right? That's right, Mandy, but city attorney Anita Burgess says this is the first time her office has heard of any suit. She did say a claims adjuster might have handled an initial claim for the city, but a conclusion was never reached. Okay, thanks for that report, Stacia. Again, Little John is currently awaiting trial on criminal charges for violating a person's civil rights. If convicted, he faces up to two years in jail or probation. The jaws of life are needed to free a man from his car after an afternoon wreck. The accident happened just before 2.30 this afternoon at the intersection of Quaker and 34th Street. Police say the brown car and the white car collided and the force threw them into a nearby parking lot. The man in the white car had to be cut out of that vehicle and was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. This female passenger and the elderly driver of the brown car you've seen suffered moderate injuries. Sadly, a 15-year-old girl is killed and her sister seriously hurt in a car accident south of Tulia. 18-year-old Erica Perez was driving north on County Road 14 yesterday evening when she lost control and slid off the road. Erica was taken to an Amarillo hospital with serious injuries, but her sister, 15-year-old Janelle Lee Perez, was pronounced dead in a Tulia hospital. Officers say both girls were wearing seat belts at the time of that crash. Could Texas prisoners be let loose because there isn't enough space? A new report shows prisons are running out of beds faster than expected. County jails have the available space to ease the demand, but the state doesn't have the money to lease the beds. Lubbock County Sheriff David Gutierrez, who's in charge of the Texas Commission on Jail Standards, says it's a matter of responsibility. We have beds in the county system. Now, there are some counties, as ourselves, that are overcrowded, and but we're dealing with that. We're in the middle of a a bond. It's an easy solution, but once again, uh, 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 the cost to house a prisoner, I can assure you, is more than $20 a day that the state wants to pay. And the liability would then fall back on the county, and that is a tremendous responsibility. Texas Department of Criminal Justice spokesman Mike Viesca admits prisons are nearing capacity, but insists criminals are not being let out that shouldn't be. Well, the Tech basketball teams have hit the road tonight. The Lady Raiders have made their way to Nebraska, and Bob Knight's men's team will hunt for Tigers at the University of Missouri's new arena. Jeff talks to the general about tonight's game later in sports. Plus, four young ladies are finding out that hard work pays off in a big way. And we're wrapping up what's been, well, overall, just a really great day out there. And did you guys enjoy it? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, there's it's more on the way. So, right now, let's take a look at how our temperatures are doing up at Lubbock International Airport. 65 degrees, nothing to sneeze at there. And as we look into the next few hours, it should begin to drop back off. Here's a quick peek from our Wolfworth Sky Cam showing mostly clear skies. The only cloud cover is well out on the horizon. It's mostly clear skies through the night tonight. I'll tell you what that leads to, plus what to expect for the rest of the week right after this break. Here's the DNA. This is unusual. Leadership. Bringing you a clear, precise forecast generated by the awesome power of the exclusive FutureCast weather computer. Here's meteorologist Carlos Gonzalez in the KLBK 13 Storm Track Center. Well, good evening to everyone. We're starting off by taking a look at Storm Track Digital Doppler. Well, mainly just because we know there's nothing on it. So it's a good way to start off a forecast. We know that it's going to be clear as we have totally clear skies out there. So no rainfall expected, which is exactly what we've got. Very dry weather across the South Plains. They help to bring in some sunshine. And along with the sunshine, more comfortable temperatures than yesterday. Up to 65 degrees right now for Lubbock. Actually, an hour ago, we were checking in at 66. So a very pleasant afternoon and evening across the region and up into Plainview as well. 63, 64 for Clovis. Hobbs, really liking it. 70 degrees. But by the end of the day tomorrow, 
we could be looking at temperatures in the 70s as well. Now, here's how everything kind of worked out throughout the day. Last night at this time, remember, we had the winds, and they were out of a southerly direction. That helped to bring in the warmer temperatures today, or rather, last night. But then today, we started to see a little bit of a shift in the winds. And although they're out of a somewhat northerly direction, it actually kind of assisted with the warmer temperatures and that the drier air was all up to the north. And here's kind of what I'm talking about. We actually had a lot of cloud cover, but it was more down to the southern regions up to the north, no cloud cover. So more dry air that's brought in means clearer skies, therefore more sunshine and warmer temperatures. The cooler air is well up to the north, so nothing we really have to worry about there. As far as the day today, we started off at 5 o'clock this morning with our sky tracker, cloud cover down to the south, a few light showers on the western slopes of the mountains throughout New Mexico. Throughout the day today, we started to see a little bit of that cloud cover trying to make its way northward, but really, it's the dry air that continues to win out over the top of the region, including the cloud cover that tried to come in from the north. That was also blocked out by dry air over the top of central Texas. Here's how it all kind of worked out. We started off in the early morning hours with a bit of cloud cover up into southwestern Nebraska, central Kansas, northern Oklahoma. And as I set this into motion, we're going to watch the clouds try and ease their way past Oklahoma into north Texas, but watch these clouds just kind of dissipate as they push their way down southward. Dry air winning over the top of that moisture in the northern portions of the country. So we're going to continue with mostly clear skies throughout the rest of the night tonight. And then what's out to the west to move in? but more clear skies. So some more good news for us there. However, all this moisture down in Mexico could be affecting us eventually. But for the day today, everything was fantastic. We had two high pressure systems, what we like to call a double barrel high pressure system. When you get two big blue H's on the map, typically it means pretty nice weather for us right here in Lubbock. Up to the north though, where you have a few of the big red L's, low pressure systems, or anything that kind of is associated with that, such as cold fronts, warm fronts, you end up with a little bit of moisture. The way that this is going to work out as we push into the day tomorrow is warmer temperatures moving in once again as we still have two high pressure systems in place. So expect warmer yet tomorrow up into the 70s possibly. And then as we go from the day tomorrow into the day on Friday, we start to see a cold front try and make its way down from the north. It's going to remain farther up to the north though. What's really going to affect us locally is this little patch of moisture that makes its way in off of Baja. That's going to help to bring in a few showers to southwestern New Mexico and a few clouds to the South Plains. So look for an increase in clouds, slightly cooler temperatures for the day on Friday, and then Saturday could begin to see some of the cooler air make its way in from the north. But until then, tonight's temperatures, not as cold as the past few nights, 36 degrees, mostly clear skies. The day tomorrow will bring us highs around 71 degrees with more sunshine to partly cloudy skies. And then the temperatures begin to drop off just a little bit for the day on Friday with more cloud cover by Saturday and Sunday in the 50s with that cold front possibly pulling in from the north. But after that slight little drop in temperatures over the weekend, next week's work week is expected to bring more sunshine and temperatures back in the 60s again, guys. And typically for this time of year, we look for high temperatures to be right around 50 degrees. So we're doing well above that. Can't ask for much more. You bet. Thanks, Carlos. Well, how would you like to see the Grammys live in person? Yeah, well, KLBK 13 is giving you that opportunity now for a chance to win. You go by Heroes and Legacies in the Kingsgate North Shopping Center and register. Then, starting Monday, we'll begin drawing names of the finalists. Trip includes tickets to the Grammy Awards in Los Angeles, round-trip airfare from Lubbock, and hotel accommodations. Good luck to you. A local Girl Scout troop is off to Washington. Yeah, up next on KLBK 13 News, Cookie Sales send four local girls to the President's inauguration, and we'll meet them next. For an unbeaten...